Covering news where you live, this is 5 News. We have the top headlines where you live. I'm Tiffany Lee. Let's get you caught up on what's going on around our area. The University of Arkansas is celebrating Black History Month with two new additions. They announced plans for the Fayetteville campus to be home to the Arkansas Center for Black Music. That's a facility that will allow students to not only study the history of black music, but also host concerts throughout the year. Grammy Award-winning educator Jeffrey Allen Murdoch will help oversee the new center's creation. Murdoch is the U of H Director of Choral Activities and will also help lead in the creation of a new master's program that's focused on black sacred music. The program will be the first of its kind in the country. Now let's get a check of your weather with meteorologist Zach Scott. Hey, Tiffany, tracking a little wintry mix in some spots, a chilly Friday for us. We had the rain Tuesday, Wednesday, break Thursday, quick moving system coming in with a round of colder air. Uh, this air mass will be cold really only for today, and then it's going to modify quickly and will warm up through the weekend. Chances some flurries. We've had flurries and some sprinkles around northwest Arkansas through your Friday morning. Still the best chance for flurries. Northwest Arkansas, a few sprinkles, no impacts expected. Temperatures in the 40s in the River Valley, lower levels of the River Valley off towards the south. We're talking about just some chilly showers as you work further to the south. You start to get into the Washitals. The highest elevations of the Washitals will see a little bit of a wintry mix. Could see some light accumulation of dusting, maybe up to an inch. And uh, again, the highest ridges of Scott, LaFleur, Logan counties into southern Sebastian counties, those areas, a little bit better chance to see that mix lingering through the day. And again, some light accumulation. That's what we're watching here. Future track radar picking up on more moisture to the south. That's why you see a little bit more green showing up. Some scattered snow bands, some flurries. Again, northwest Arkansas, best chance for that is through the first half of the day. Early afternoon, uh, we drop our chance for a flurry or sprinkle down to around 10% chance. And then we focus mostly off towards the south. Scattered showers around the I-40 corridor, Arkansas River Valley through most of the day, especially into the Washitals, going to be a cloudy, damp day for us. We'll look for temperatures to top out upper 30s, lower 40s, northwest Arkansas, 40s in the River Valley. Again, the higher elevations of the Washita Mountains will stay more into the mid to upper 30s. Uh, northwest wind today, or excuse me, a northeast wind, about 5 to 15 miles per hour, making it a little cool outside for us. It'll feel more like the 30s across the entire area. We'll slip down into the 20s as we go overnight and into the 30s for the River Valley. Here's a look at the weekend forecast coming up. Sunshine warming through the weekend, low 50s to start, upper 50s for northwest Arkansas, and then we're tracking widespread rainfall likely uh, Monday night into the first half of the day on Tuesday, trending drier as we get in the back half of your Valentine's Day. Tiffany? Now let's get you caught up on some stories that you might have missed this week. Oklahoma legislative session has officially started. Governor Kevin Stitt started the session saying the state of the state is better than it's ever been. Haley Weger joins us with the highlights. With over $4 billion in savings, Governor Stitt is outlining his plans for the state, striving for excellence in education, investing in infrastructure, cutting taxes, and working up to his ultimate goal of Oklahoma becoming a top 10 state. My fellow Oklahomans, the state of our state is the strongest it's ever been. Kicking off this year's legislative session, Governor Stitt requesting over $10 billion be appropriated to the state. This year, we must capitalize on the progress we've made. Stitt says he wants to reduce the personal income tax rate and end the grocery tax. We need to keep the momentum going. Let's cut taxes. He wants to put $20 million towards attracting more businesses. Workforce is the biggest challenge companies are facing. Companies from all over the country and the world are moving to our state to build and expand. In education, he recommended a $5 billion appropriation toward a reading initiative, new schools, and a performance-based teacher pay raise. Sid is also pushing for school vouchers. Every child deserves a quality education that fits their unique needs. The governor also wants to invest almost $941 million toward public safety and judiciary costs, over $210 million towards natural resources, and over $2.7 billion to health and human services. Let's make a significant statement that Oklahoma is here to stay on the national stage. Right after President Biden gave his State of the Union address earlier this week, Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders delivered the Republican Party's response. Five News reporter Michael Wilson has more on the first Arkansan in decades to deliver a response to the State of the Union. 
Hey, good morning to you. The last Arkansan to do this was Bill Clinton when he was governor back in 1985. That was nearly 40 years ago. Sanders is no stranger to the national stage, having been former President Donald Trump's press secretary. And yesterday she returned to the national spotlight, but this time as the governor of Arkansas. And Arkansas is where she addressed the nation from the state capitol. Now, this all comes less than a month after she took the oath of office, becoming the first woman to be Arkansas's governor. Now, she is also the youngest governor in the country right now. The Republican Party of Arkansas calling it a bold decision to select Sanders tonight, saying that she is a conservative leader with a unique chance to share her love and vision for Arkansas on a national stage. President Biden's weakness puts our nation and the world at risk. And the president's refusal to stand up to China, our most formidable adversary, is dangerous and unacceptable. President Biden is unwilling to defend our border, defend our skies, and defend our people. He is simply unfit to serve as commander in chief. Since her campaign, Governor Sanders has heavily criticized the president from his pandemic response to immigration policies. Now, last night she did speak about inflation, education, and freedom of speech, as well as, quote, big government. And GOP members say that she was chosen because she fights on behalf of parents and small businesses. And on the other hand, last night, the Democratic Party of Arkansas praised the president. President Biden interpreted, uh, I'm sorry, inherited uh, one of the worst economic situations, and certainly with the pandemic, one of the toughest uh, situations that we face as a country um, in our lifetime. And so we see results being delivered by this president. We see Arkansas having investments of over $4 billion in infrastructure that are getting people back to work. Now you can view the Democratic Party of Arkansas's rebuttal to the governor's speech on their Facebook page. And of course, we'll have more on this on our website, 5newsonline.com. Michael Wilson, 5 News. Thanks, Micah. So this week, there was also a deadly shootout with police officers in Spyro. The situation started unfolding when a person shot a police officer near the city's Harp store. Yesterday, the suspect opened fire on officers again, this time near the city's police department. The Floor County Sheriff Rodney Derryberry tells 5 News that the suspect was pronounced dead following the shooting. 5 News reporter Rachel Williams spoke with the suspect's family and has more. Police tell us the suspect Damian Henderson shot again at police officers just blocks from the Spiral Police Department. The LaFleur County Sheriff says Henderson was pronounced dead at the Mercy Hospital in Fort Smith. This all started when authorities say suspect Damian Henderson had opened fire at officers around 7.30 Wednesday night at the Harps Grocery Store on Broadway Street in Spiro. They caught Damian last night. Why wouldn't he handcuff? If they would have handcuffed him and put him in the car, this would have never happened. If he was, they felt he was that much danger when he got out that house, why didn't you handcuff him? As police were searching for Henderson, Spyro police say he shot at officers Thursday afternoon. Officers returned fire, hitting Henderson in the stomach. Five News spoke to Damien's grandma, and she says he struggled with mental illness. Damien, I guess he just snapped and said, well, if you're going to shoot me, I'll shoot you first. You know, so c because anybody can tell you, Damon don't bother anybody. He likes his dogs. He likes his bicycle. Neighbors, family, and friends say they were shocked to hear Damien was involved in the shooting. When I heard about this, I said, wait a minute. This is kind of out of his character. This is not the Damien that I know. He doesn't deserve this. I have never heard anything bad, negative about Damon. I just know he loved his dogs. He didn't bother anyone. I, I worked at Sparrow School and I've never heard a bad thing about Damien. Police say this is an ongoing investigation and OSBI is assisting with the case. But for now, I'm in Spyro covering news where you live. Rachel Williams, 5 News. Those are some of your top headlines this week. We'll continue to follow the news all day. Catch up with us again this evening on your 5 News at 4, 5, and 6. I'm Tiffany Lee. Have a great day.